morning. Um, first off, I uh, hope you forgive the uh, noise in this episode. I'm on a very busy road. So, but anyway, this episode is going to feature the um, site where Marine Platoon Sergeant Mitchell Page earned his Medal of Honor. So if you look in the background, you can see that's Mount Austin. And so I hope you guys enjoy the um, video. I have to apologize for the noise once again. It's a very busy road. So this is the main ridge line that the Sag Battalion of the Seven Marines occupied on the 24th and 25th of October, 1945. So that track, where that band is driving by now, was the main track that leads to the north from the beach. I believe that's the track that the uh, Marines walked up to occupy the positions. And then when Mitchell Page and the rest of the uh, battalion moved in here, they moved here at night because um, the Japanese were trying to, to flank the Marines. You can see how steep the, um, the embankment is. It basically goes into a natural bowl. I'll show you on the map. So that's looking um, basically west or southwest. And then it follows around Mount Austin there in the background. This area is high, uh, heavily populated now. So. So Colonel Oka and the rest of the um, Japanese regiment basically moved on the east-west trail, which is roughly below us somewhere. I think most of it's now um, no longer exist. It's been built on with the houses. So they were supposed to attack on the 23rd. It was a coordinated attack. So the main attack was supposed to be south against um, Henderson Field, where Puller and the 164th um, U.S. Army Regiment was and Puller's 1st Battalion, 7th Marines. That was the main thrust. So they went around Mount Austin, which is in the background. At the same time, it was supposed to have been two secondary attacks. So Colonel Oka was supposed to come attack over this ridge I'm standing on now. He cut off the two forward uh, battalions that Marine General Vandegrift had deployed on the, the Tanakau. And the main um, diversionary attack was going to cross go across the mouth of Matanikau with 12 tanks and the rest of the 4th Japanese Infantry Regiment. It's like a, a lot of the um, three major offensive battles the Japanese did on Guadalcanal, they couldn't coordinate their attacks. So each attack was piecemeal. So Oka attack uh, occurred on the night of the, um, the 26th, straight up this ridge. This position I'm looking at now was occupied um, by Golf Company of the 2nd Battalion of the 7th Marines. So that's a reverse slope. You'll notice this area, unlike my other episodes, this has been built on heavily, so there's probably no left. I doubt I'll see any reverse slope positions through there, but the Marines didn't really have much time to dig in on that night. All right, that's looking back west on the ridge line where I was just standing. So this is like a natural bowl that the Marines were holding. The Japanese were attacking straight below me. So I apologize for the thickness, and you really can't see much. So Mitchell Page, his position was on a, a forward knoll in front of um, F Company. It was put out there uh, with a machine gun section. He had another machine gun section of two heavy machine guns to his left, um, slightly down the ridge, he said. He said it wasn't a, a great position for machine guns. It was the best he could do. And in fact, he had to set his machine guns up at night. He said he didn't have any grazing fire, but he had some oblique fire. So let me just see if I can move in and see if we can get a better view. So through the night, Page was moving around from machine gun, to position, uh, machine gun position to machine gun position. So he said Golf Company was to his right about 100 yards in a, a thick wooded area. So Golf Company would have been in that area there. The Japanese was coming from that area, so that's basically looking west. And that's north. Page was on a knoll uh, directly in front of me, so I'll um, go over there now. And this is the area where Page took the machine gun um, from the mount with two belts of ammunition and led the counter charge um, in the dawn. I believe it's also the, the area where there's stuck a Japanese uh, a photo of a lot of dead Japanese are here.
So I was standing right behind the knoll that Paige was initially on. Um, Paige moving back and forth throughout the, um, the battle. Made it from machine gun to uh, machine gun position to machine gun position. So he mentions he, uh, the only time he had um, provided grazing fire was to his rear back toward where Major Conley had the forward command post. The forward command post is directly in front of me on the uh, reverse slope. The large water tank there, I don't know if you'll be able to see it, was roughly in that area. So Mitchell Page said he could provide grazing fire at one stage when um, the knoll was overrun and Fox Company basically pulled out and left Page by himself surrounded by dead and wounded Marines. Um, he was concerned because the Japanese were running um, toward the top of this ridge and he knew they would overrun the um, battalion command post. That's what Page did. He um, free gunned it, um, swung the um, heavy machine gun around for shooting the Japanese in the rear. Um, after the battle with Major Conley, when they were inspecting the dead Japanese, they found a lot of the Japanese had bullet holes in their back and in the soles of their feet. But at the time when the machine guns was coming over, the Major and the rest of the, um, the staff thought that Japanese and um, overran the position, killed all the Marines, and was using the um, Marine machine guns against them. I'll give a, a brief narrative on the actions that um, Platoon Sergeant Mitchell Page um, had done on the night to, to earn the medal. I thought I'd come up here. It's a great view. Couldn't really talk around the actual area where it is. It's heavily populated, a lot of traffic. Um, dogs are coming out, rocks are being thrown. So probably not the best uh, area to do some filming. So it's basically in and out. So I thought I'd come up here, nice peaceful um, area to give you guys a bit of a talk. I'll let you see these great views. So it's facing west. We'll cross Iron Bottom Sound. Savo Island in the distance. Then we're going north. And that ridge there is now called Kola Ridge. So during the time of the battle, that was where the 2nd Battalion and the 7th Marines were occupying the Japanese. Colonel Oka's regiment was taken from this area from Matanikau, so they crossed Matanikau River, which is below us there, east-west track. They got into the thick jungles and ravine. They were delayed for about two days in a diversionary attack, so they couldn't coordinate to attack and they attacked straight up the ridges. And their plan was to go over that ridge in front of us, so I can zoom into it, and cut off the two forward deployed battalions that um, Vandegrift, the Marine General, had at the mouth of Matanikau. At the mouth of Matanikau, the Japanese had deployed 12 tanks. We were making a demonstration with all the infantry. So Vandegrift, the Marine commander, knew the only really place that they could cross with tanks in the mouth of Tanikau. So they, they um, sent some units there. At the same time, they had reports that one of the Japanese had a regiment were going to um, flank the two forward battalions. So down south, the 2nd Battalion of the 7th Marines and the 1st Battalion of the 7th Marines so down in that area over there. We're at Bloody Ridge and the Coffin Corner. So you look at my two episodes, it features the Barcelona and the Coffin Corner. That's that area. So they didn't know it at the time. The Japanese 2nd Division had done a, um, a march, about a 30 mile march around Mount Austin to the main strike effort was going to be um, the Southern Lines. So they had a great plan and actually Marine reconnaissance and air failed to see the whole division moving through the jungle because the Japanese cut their own tracks. And unfortunately they couldn't coordinate the attacks with the two diversionary. Um, okay. So General Vandergriff, thinking the, the southern line was no threat, pulled the second time the submarines out because they had reports that the Japanese were going to try to do envelopment on this ridge here and cut those two forward uh, deployed marine battalions. So the second time the submarines did a, a march basically from the Lunga area there, Bloody Ridge, went straight down the, um, the coastal track the Marines had, or government track there they called it and come straight over top of that ridge, back to the trail that I showed you earlier. I don't know if you can see in the distance, the water tank, you see the two towers and the water tank in the middle. So that was uh, roughly where the track came out and that's where I filmed earlier. That was a scene 
of the major Japanese attack there. This shows you the defensive nature of the battle the Marines were conducting here on Guadalcanal, especially in the early stages. That all three Medal of Honors, it was earned by Marine enlistmen, all three were machine gunners, so they earned them in a defensive um, engagement. The same with uh, Page. So Page was a platoon sergeant, I think he came in in 1936, he was a, um, a veteran Marine. He'd, he'd trained his men quite well, just like John Bassalon. They basically knew each other too, so all these guys knew each other um, initially when the division was formed. So on the night of the 26th, when the Japanese attacked his position, um, Page and the rest of his uh, Marines, because they were in a far no, beat off the first Japanese assault. Um, they had a little time to consolidate when the second Japanese assault occurred. Uh, they overran Mitch's no with the rest of his platoon. His platoon was uh, mainly killed and wounded. And Fox's company, who was behind him, basically pulled out. In his own autobiography, um, Page basically was said that he was so mad at that stage he grabbed a, a rifle and fired a shot in the direction and tried to yell for him to, to come back. With all his men in his machine gun section, he had to kill the wounded. Page remained there, alone, man in a machine gun. I'm firing into Japanese. They overran his position, um, and then they advanced toward the knoll where the forward um, battalion uh, command post where Major Conley was. After firing at the um, Japanese with the grazing fire that, it, that it was behind him at that stage, uh, he was concerned about the battalion command post. Um, he then started moving from gun to gun, was manning and firing the guns to try to make the Japanese think that the, the line was fully manned. Then at uh, one stage he ran to Golf Company, which is about 100 meters away, uh, spoke to two of the machine gunners, said follow me, he grabbed a mach heavy machine gun and a few riflemen, then moved back toward the, toward the knoll. So as he was moving toward the knoll, he seen the Japanese were pulling back from the other um, knoll behind him. And he seen a, one of his machine guns on the no, it wasn't manned, and he thought the Japanese would actually get to it. So it was a race to the gun. So he grabbed the gun before the Japanese, and he started firing the gun again. At that stage, he was left all alone once again on the no. And in his own account, he said he was the only automatic weapon the Marines had firing at that stage. So all the Japanese fire was going against Page. There was Page all alone on the no, firing away. And Major Conley um, rallied about uh, 20 Marines, it was said. Uh, there were the cooks and the radio operators and um, some of the support personnel, and they formed a counterattack to take back the knoll. Once Page seen this happening, he yelled for the golf company guys um, slightly behind him. He already told him to fix bayonets earlier. And he said, basically, follow me, as he grabbed the M1917 heavy machine gun to um, 250 round belts of ammunition and charged down the hill firing. Page said when he ran down the hill earlier he'd cut the sleeves out of his um, uniform because he wanted to throw grenades better. He said the long sleeves restricted his use in throwing grenades. Um, so he, when he cradled the um, heavy machine gun it burnt both his arms. But he still ran down the hill and the first person he encountered was a Japanese field officer he said and he fired a burst right in front of him. And a number of Japanese jumped out of the uh, grass and he's knocked them, goes, those guys down too. So it was an amazing effort that Page did. And then he said after that he went on quiet. And then the Japanese withdrew.